happy Monday. Happy episode 31 of Bet to Win. I'm Claudia Bellafato. He's Joe Fan. And we will be reunited at some point, hopefully by Thursday show. But for now, we're going to do this one separate. Again, we've got a breakdown of week 17. We'll give out some winning picks for Monday Night Football. And we're going to catch up. How are you I doing, Joe? It. I'm doing great. Happy New Year to you. Did you have a good, uh, Happy did you have a, New Year did you have a good to holiday you. weekend? You were in Nash Vegas. I did. It was extended. I, I know. I went to Vegas. It's just, I probably Nash wouldn't Vegas. have gone after just being tired. I know. Everyone kept saying Nash Vegas. I'm like, I live in Vegas. I don't even really have a reason to be here, but I had booked it and I was like, it's booked. I might as well go. And um, it was I, good. It was do you fun. like that? Had you been Too Nashville? many people. I'm getting old. Had you been before? Yeah, no, I've been a few times. Um, and it, it is fun. But then my friends went to the game. I left Sunday morning to come back and watch so I could watch the games from here. And my friends ended up going to the game. I'm like, if you told me that, I would have stayed. I but feel like you would have, you wouldn't they like happens. sitting in the rain the whole time? Seems like it wasn't great weather yeah. in Nashville. But I love Nashville. I used to live that's, in Nashville. I covered true. the Titans for one year and I, I miss that place. It's one of my favorite cities, if not my oh, favorite I city. I forgot you did that. Yeah, it's a fun town. Yeah. Uh, but an eventful weekend. Lots, just all of the sports, all of the football this weekend. So much, yeah. I actually did a lot of live betting college football, which I don't usually do. And I would, I was at the bars because I can't just like sit there and like drink. I don't think that's fun. So I'm watching the games intently. I'm like, crap, I don't have any action on this. I'm call my buddy. I'm like, all right, what's the live line right now? Like, what's this? What's their passing defense like? Because I, I don't watch like a ton of college football, so I didn't know a ton about the teams. But I would call my buddy and he would read me off some stats. I'm like, all right. Let's hammer that. So it was fun. There you uh, go. But for NFL, NFL, I had a lot of teasers and parlays. I had a lot of action this weekend. I little put in a lot of last minute teaser and parlays. The one I gave out on the show, um, it was a three team six point. I had Colts down to half, Bengals plus eleven, which was great. Packers minus half, half. So it was just the Colts that screwed me there. But um, I gave out Rams minus three and a half. That lost. And then Packers minus six and a half and Georgia minus seven both hit uh, Georgia comfortably. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> yeah. It was an eventful weekend. <laughs> I had a number of wins that I enjoyed. You had Utah plus four, also had the money line, which was just heartbreak. That was the, the Rose Bowl was wonderful theater, as it always is. Um, but that game was incredible uh, with Utah and Ohio State, a huge comeback from the Bucs. Um, I was also on the Bengals plus five. And the Bengals money line, which was a nice game for me. And then I built a build your own parlay that I put out on Twitter uh, that hit for Sunday Night Football. However, there were a number of losses. Most notably, <laughs> I sold myself on the Michigan Wolverines. And it was so bad. And it was so bad from the jump. And you're thinking, <laughs> yeah. how on earth? Did I convince myself to fade the SEC in the college football playoff in favor of the Big Ten? I I need to take a lap or something for. I mean, it was just like I you tried know, to I, tell you're, you, you're yeah, hold that out. You did. I I will hold it. It'll be on like it's an all timer for me. And I was so pumped <laughs> about it. I was like seven and a half. I get the hook as well. Let's go, Wolverines. I mean, with Har Harbaugh's boys, it was bad. Um, I also lost my uh, winning pick of last week. It was also a three-team teaser. I had the Bengals and I had the Chargers and then also the Colts, uh, which was just brutal. I know mm -hmm. we'll get to the Colts and Raiders in a second. That was a wild game, but shame on the Colts. Shame on Carson Wentz. He played and everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It wasn't good. So lots of action, um, more L's than W's, but our Bengals got a win. So that was a fun game. Yeah, I'm mad I didn't have them in more. Like, I had faith in them, and when we talked about it, we both agreed with a lot of the points that each other made. I don't know why I didn't include them in more. I had too much faith in the Colts, not enough in the Bengals, but we move on. Uh, let's talk some of the big games from Sunday. We'll start with the Bengals. They now take the AFC North title for the first time since 2015 with a 34-31 win against the Chiefs. Like we said, we had faith going into this game, and they looked good Continue. To look good. Their offense is rolling. The Chiefs kicked off laying three and a half after ending an eight game win streak. There's 56% of the spread of the handle on the Bengals. So we weren't the only ones. They were down 11 heading into the half, bounced back in the second. The defense limited the Chiefs to just three points in the second half while the offense put up 17. Great team win with a last second field goal. 
All around team win, but a huge game for Burrow and Chase. Joe Burrow, 30 for 39, 446 yards, four touchdowns, no interceptions. This man can't be stopped. Jamar Chase, 266 receiving on 11 catches, three touchdowns, breaking the record for most receiving yards by a rookie. The dude is an animal. Um, I know there was controversial calls, as there always is. I don't know how much you think that takes away from the win, but either way, this Bengals offense is just unreal, Joe. It's amazing the defensive turnaround as well. Like you mentioned, just three points in the second half. The Chiefs scored four consecutive touchdowns in the first half, and you thought it doesn't matter how many Mm -hmm. 70-yard touchdowns uh, Joe Burrow is throwing to Jamar Chase. It's not going to matter because their defense can't get a stop. Lo and behold, they turned things around and figured it out in the second half. It was an incredible win for them, and and I don't think you you look at the the bad calls that would diminish that win at all. It's in your clutch spot to win the division. You're at home. You're playing the class of the AFC for the last couple of years. And not only do you win that game, but you do it in comfort behind fashion. And Jer, there is just so much swag to this offense that starts with Joe Burrow uh, smoking the cigar in the hat and T-shirt game once again, shades of the national championship with LSU. Um, it's a game that, that we, I don't know, none of us I don't think were super surprised in terms of how the Bengals look. They can put up points with anybody. And Jamar Chase is unstoppable. It was, you know, it was like the, what, the day after... Or two days after we watched, no, it was the very next day after we watched Jackson Smith and Jigba uh, from Ohio State dominate that game against uh, Utah. It was a very similar performance where, and then Joe Burrow sort of said as much. It's sort of YOLO ball. It's like he's down there somewhere, or somewhere, just chuck it up, and you know he's going to make a play. He's special in terms of the 50-50 balls, in terms of, um, again, just giving him a chance in single coverage down the sideline, but also that 72-yard touchdown that extra gear he has oh. where he catches the ball facing the quarterback, turns up field, hits the Jets, and then is gone untouched for a touchdown. This is a really fun team. It's a fun bandwagon to be on. I'm going to be on them all, all during the playoffs. Um, and congrats to them for winning the NFC or the AFC North. I don't have any issues with, with the Chiefs. I think they're not going anywhere. They will be just fine. Um, but it was fun to see this Bengals team respond to the early adversity they faced, come back and win this game. I'm curious what you thought about the end um, with Zach Taylor opting to go for it a couple of extra times. Joe Burrow ends up getting hurt. They ultimately do kick the field goal once he does get hurt. But that was wild. And I guess I get the logic as you go up a touchdown when the Chiefs don't have any timeouts and you just bank on them not hitting a yeah. Hail Mary where if you kick the field goal, they can probably get in field goal range in just one or two plays. So I, I sort of mm-hmm. get it. But man, that was ballsy. It was ballsy, but this has been a situation for, it seems like the majority of teams, I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like this has been the year of, was that the right call? Was it not? And I I think it's just a game to game basis. And it depends on how much that coach has faith in, in the offense to get it done or not. I don't know. I mean, it worked out, right? So what are you supposed to do? But I don't know. I'm not an NFL coach. I never know if it's the right choice or not. I, I agree, though, that I think maybe we're not talking about the Bengals' defense enough. And to hold the Chiefs, two to 112 total yards of offense in the second half, I mean, that's just crazy. And you're right, we can't forget about the Chiefs. We're not going to forget about the Chiefs. We're not going to downplay them. Um, but to know that a defense that – a team that's not known for their defense is able to hate to hold the Chiefs um, to that sort of second half is and doing so with, and doing for so without forcing turnovers or getting any sacks. I mean, it wasn't necessarily, necessarily right. negative plays. It was just winning on the down to down basis and getting yeah. off the field on third down. Yeah, super impressive. Yeah, gotta love Joey B and the Bengals. Uh, let's talk Raiders. They keep their playoff hopes alive. I, there's a lot of teams I have on this rundown that I just don't know what to do with anymore. The Raiders are one of them. Uh, keep their playoff hopes alive against the Colts with a walk off field goal. To win 23 20 was the final score. The Colts kicked off as eight point favorites, and Colts betters like you and I, Joe, we were happy to learn that Carson Wentz was cleared to play, but happiness didn't last long because Wentz of the offense only managed 10 total yards of offense in the first quarter, didn't get much else going for the rest of the game, took a lead early in the third, but were unable to take advantage of it. Wentz missed a wide open throw to T.Y. Hilton that would probably have been a touchdown. Nothing makes sense to me anymore. The Raiders just got completely blown out by the Chiefs team we just talked about just three weeks ago. We were saying this Colts team is finally looking legit. Parody, I guess, is all you can say. It's just like, what what are we supposed to expect at this point? 
from any team. <laughs> I don't know if I've been on the right side of a Raiders game all season. I've faded them two weeks in a row, <laughs> have lost both bets. Last week, it was the Broncos. This week, the Colts. You go back to uh, Thanksgiving where they blew out the Cowboys, but they've had so many games where they just look so inept and terrible. This is a game that comes down to one quarterback made big-time throws and one didn't. Carson Wentz did not play well. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much you attribute it to not practicing and being on the COVID list and how much of it you just attribute to him just not playing well. But you look at the long touchdown at T.Y. Hilton. That was super lucky. An underthrown ball that had two defenders in front of it. It gets tipped up and he gets the kind of the, the, you know, the candy hop right into his lap for a long touchdown. It goes for 45 yards. The miss on third down, that third and seven play, was egregious, wide open, running up the left sideline. Doesn't require much touch. You just have to put it in the ballpark. You can underthrow it. You can overthrow it a little bit. And he sailed it 10 yards over his head. I do <laughs> want to give Derek Carr some credit because the man has led a number of very impressive touchdown drives, particularly late in games and scoring drives to win games. And yesterday was no different. You look at that throw he made to Hunter Renfro, uh, at the end of the game, it looked mm. like it was a touchdown on Hunter Renfro. Ends up being called down. They, they kick the field goal all the same and win. That was insane. Avoids pressure. Steps up in the pocket. Delivers a throw up the right seam. Over the outstretched armored defender into Hunter Renfro's hands. That's a big time throw in a clutch moment. And Derek Carr has had a number of them this season. Uh, a lot of heroics from him. And not just that, but keeping this team together from a leadership standpoint. Amid all of the controversy that's mm -hmm. gone down where you've got Damon Arnett, who people forget about, got cut because he was threatening violence against somebody on social media. It's such a footnote because of what happened with John Gruden. And of course, most notably, Henry Ruggs uh, and his incident uh, with the drunk driving, uh, sadly killing a young woman. I mean, there has been a lot of turbulence through this Raiders season. And all of a sudden, they're in a win and in mm -hmm. situation, which is, is absolutely um, deserves, whether they win that game next Sunday against the Chargers or not, they deserve a ton of credit for being mm -hmm. in this spot. And Derek Carr, he ain't going to be the, there's no award to give him. I think Colin Cowherd tweeted this yesterday. I really liked it. He's like, just give him an award. Make something up because, uh, he did, he, because he deserves it. He's been really, really good this season. Yeah. He's had to deal with a lot. But I, I almost feel like, too, I guess you could say like it was halfway through the season at that point. We would talk about the Raiders and it was like so underrated that they had almost as many passing yards a game as the Bucks did, who had the most, you know what I mean? And it was like, maybe, I don't want to say they flew under the radar because it's not like they were playing great football, but a lot of it had to do with Derek Carr. And you mentioned with the, the issue of not practicing with Carson Wentz. I think it just goes to show you if you're not a great quarterback, you're not going to play great when you're not practicing because you had Aaron Rodgers who, what was it, like the, pa the past two weeks wasn't practicing before this game and he would come in and you couldn't tell the difference. So I think it just really depends on if you're a great quarterback or not and no shade to Wentz, but I don't, you know, he's not quite Rogers for the record. <laughs> uh, I still think the Raiders are a bad football team. So I still will be happily fading them for yeah. however long they're playing yeah. football. I will that's, fade that's them fair. until they lose. Uh, they're, I mean, their point differential is minus 68, which isn't the end all be all. Obviously your record is what it says it is. Um, yeah. but they're just not that good. I'm so angry that the Colts ruined my teaser. But I'm over it. Yeah. Yeah. They ruined several of my teasers and parlays, but we'll move on. Uh, one game that was very interesting to watch, and we talked about this before the show the Buccaneers and the Jets. So Brady does it, proves he's the GOAT with a game winning pass late in the fourth quarter. But man, was there an upset on the horizon? The final score 28 to 24, which no one predicted because the Bucs kicked off laying 13, 90% of the against the spread handle was on the Bucs. And I wish we had Matoya in here to, to talk with us about how this game was for them. But what do you know? The Bucs were the ones ended up trailing by 14 in the third. And uh, Joe, I know you have a few words to say on this, but that was around the time that Antonio Brown had his tantrum. And we'll talk about that, but let's talk about the game a little bit first. Um, both the offense and defense struggled. They got their first lead of the game with 15 seconds left. A 33-yard touchdown pass from Tommy B to Cyril Grayson. They don't call him the GOAT for nothing. We knew it was possible, but it didn't look like it was going to happen in this game. It did. It should not have been this close. Um, so I'm curious to get your take on the game, and then we'll get into Antonio Brown a little bit. My my take is that the Jets played this just absolutely beautifully. You outplay the Bucks the entire game, and then you allow that late-game touchdown drive where 
Mm. You give Tom Brady his due, but no competent defense is giving up that drive of 90 plus yards with no timeouts. Uh, there's no reason why <laughs> any quarterback should be able to go nine plays, 93 yards, a minute 57. You're allowing the touchdown pass at the end. Where it's a great throw. Tom Brady is still so damn good. And it's it's incredible that we continue to watch him do it on a week to week basis. Jets should have won this game, but it's great they didn't. They've already got four wins. They don't need any more. They're looking at draft pick. <laughs> uh, and you can say, hey, we got beat by Tom Brady, but look at we're moving. This is the trajectory is going up. I mean, mm-hmm. how else can you how else can you justify a fourth and two quarterback sneak to try to ice the game instead of kicking a field goal and making it a seven point game or just throwing a pass or running literally any other play besides that. Um, <laughs> Tom Brady's incredible. 410 yards, three touchdowns, one pick. The The Bucks have issues. I mean, they're missing, you know, Leonard Fournette. They're missing, obviously, well, Chris yeah. Godwin's out for the year. There are issues with this team. Now they're without Antonio Brown for the remainder of the season. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't have a huge take in this game outside of the Antonio Brown stuff just because... What a what a saga this has been for years now. Yeah, which is interesting because when I learned about why, I thought it was they had benched him, like they didn't want him to play, but it was really, because I was listening this morning to Ian Rappaport, so they wanted him to play, but he said he wasn't ready because his ankle, he didn't think, was 100%. So then essentially they told him to leave because he wasn't playing. I, I don't, that, that's what Ian Rappaport said, basically. They wanted him they said that you can't decide when you're going to play. So he said he wasn't ready. They thought they was. They wanted to play him. He said no. And I'm sure you have all seen this, whoever's listening, because it was all over social media if you weren't watching the game. But tears his shirt off, throws it in the crowd, heads to the locker room. Very dramatic. The biggest thing for me is you had a million dollars in bonus money waiting for you. All you needed was eight catches, 55 more yards, one more touchdown, like Football aside, not to say football aside, but like there was a million dollars waiting for you. So I don't know, and not to make light of any mental issue situation, but whatever you got going on, it's like, did that really have to happen? It was very interesting to watch. Um, Sad to see if he does have mental things going on. Sad to see that he did leave that much money behind. Sad to see that the Bucks are in this situation now without one of their best players. But I don't know. It's a strange situation. I don't really get the explanation that they want him to go in the game, but he wouldn't. I mean, he played. He had three catches for 26 yards on five targets. So I don't know. Here's the reality situation. Antonio Brown, this saga has been going on for years. He's now torpedoed his opportunity on, on three different teams. Um, I wouldn't count the Patriots because he was forced out given the news that came out after he signed. Mm-hmm. This dude needs help, but he also needs accountability. And I don't know how you can how you can get to one without the other. And it's a hard and delicate conversation, but it's one that we need to have. I'm all for empathy, especially as it pertains to mental illness. But I'm also for accountability. And, and this guy is someone who is yet to be held accountable for any of his actions. And I'm not just talking about being a teammate. I mean, heck, this guy almost retired over a helmet with the Raiders. And that's not in the top 50 of weird things that this guy's done. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll never forget the video of him that he posted on his YouTube celebrating being cut by the Raiders like he had just been told on the Maury show that he wasn't the father. Like, it felt like a reality show. Like, it, there's, there's no way this is real life. And then he's on the Bucks, and Bruce Arian says he's got one shot. Well, then he fakes a Vax card, gets suspended by the league. He, Bruce Arians gets asked about it and says, well, things have changed. I don't really care what anyone else thinks because I'm trying to win football games for this team. And that's always what it comes down to. It's never been about Antonio Brown deserves another chance. He deserves a second, third, Mm -hmm. fourth, fifth. I don't even know what chance we're on at this point right now. I'm all for second chances too. But at some point you have to show, again, an accountability and understanding that you've made mistakes, atone for those mistakes, and make a genuine effort to try to better yourself. And none of that has happened with Antonio Brown. Every time he talks about it, he is the victim. He is the martyr. It was just days ago where he was talking to media and said, you guys are all about drama. Excuse me? <laughs> the media is all about drama? But- and then Tom Brady comes out. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm almost done with it. I'm just, I get so fed up with the Antonio Brown saga because I dealt with it in Seattle. And Russell Wilson is, you know, pining for the Seahawks to sign this guy. And he goes and talks to the media and says, he deserves it. Why does he deserve? He doesn't deserve anything. He'll get one because he's good at football. It's exactly what happened here and why 
Uh, the stakes changed in terms of getting one shot and not turning into multiple shots with Bruce Arians because he was playing well. And Tom Brady comes out after yesterday's game and says, you know, we all need to empathize with him and, and wish him the best and he needs to get better. There's a lot of serious things going on. Sure there is. But why wasn't that happening before? You didn't have to sign him to help to make that happen. Playing in the NFL mm -hmm. is a privilege. Having Being employed is a privilege. It, there are consequences to actions and, and there is a, a status of you can get to where you're good enough at something to where you don't have to face those consequences. And so I'm just sick of it. I, I should have probably more empathy than I do to Antonio Brown, but I have more empathy to uh, the females that have filed sexual assault claims against him. And I'm more, I empathize more with teammates and coaches and organizations that he has torpedoed opportunities with. I mean, the list is mm -hmm. long with this guy. And at no point has he taken any accountability. And so I have a hard time uh, going toward the empathy bucket here with him. Maybe it'll change. Maybe he'll finally turn around and figure it out. I don't know. But good riddance to that dude. That's all I'm saying. One, one quick question before we move on to the Cardinals. Um, do we think that we'll see him on another football team? I don't no. think so. I don't think so. I don't think it was at, at no. this point. I mean, the, the dude, it was a manic episode. I mean, the dude's throwing, taking his clothes off, celebrating in a road stadium. Like, that was truly mm -hmm. bizarre, even for him. So, no, yeah. I think he's done. Which is crazy. He's a legit <laughs> yes. Hall of Fame talent. Like, he is a legit Hall oh, of Famer in terms of production and talent. And yep. hopefully, to me, again, I, I hope he doesn't get there. I don't think he deserves to be there. I think how you carry yourself and conduct yourself is important. And I hope yeah, he gets health if he needs. Uh, there's probably so. some CTE happening there. I don't want to, you know, I guess I don't want to assume I did just assume. There has to be something going on. And if there's not, then my goodness. Just a bad dude. I don't know. Yeah. And I think I think the Bucks reap it. It is an interesting. Well, that's the thing, too, is they went into it knowing, and, and Tom Brady went into it, because the, they're really close. You know, he had a be, I don't know if he offered for him or had a be actually stay at his house. So they knew the situation they were getting themselves into. But like you said, when you have a talent like AB is, it's difficult to know whether he he has really changed or if this is going to be a thing. And I think that's the only reason why I do feel empathy, because it has to be a mental illness. I don't know how you can get so many chances and continue to mess them up, but it's a situation that we don't know a ton about, so I guess we can't talk more than just being viewers of the game. So I guess we'll leave it there. And you know what? Uh, let's I move say, on I, to... I, really, I just I yes. say shame on the Bucks. You reap what you sow, but they won a Super Bowl with him. He scored a touchdown in the damn Super Bowl. So they, you know what? I guess they got the exactly. last laugh. Yeah. Yep. And that's what makes the game of football so interesting. But let's move on to Kyler and the Cardinals, another team that I just... They get a much-needed need, uh, much win in... Dallas, the final score of 25 to 22. Cowboys kicked off as six and a half point favorites. There was 85% of the handle over at Wimbet on the Cowboys spread. Not a good showing for Dallas. They had just won four straight. They could have held on to the number two seed with the win. They didn't. They now drop down to number four. The offense couldn't get going. The run game couldn't get going. They only put up 45 rushing. Receivers were dropping passes. They had penalty after penalty, 10 for 88 yards. And then the Cardinals, who had just lost three in a row, finally show up. Kyler Murray, who Joe, you and I had talked about, has sort of been hard to tr trust slash predict. He showed up, a threat with his arm and legs, 44 yards in the ground, 263 through the air. I still don't really trust him or this Cardinals team. It's impressive to see that they're doing this even without D Hop, but I just don't know what to even say about the Cowboys. Disappointing to see a team with weapons like they do have not produce every week. Mike McCarthy's still struggling with how to call timeouts. It's just both teams I am probably going to stay away from for the rest of the year, but I don't know anymore. What's yeah. your take on this game? Uh, the, the Cowboys are a weird team because, you know, they are an 11 5 division winner, but, you know, when, they, when teams have bad losses, you go back to the schedule and you say, well, maybe they haven't beaten anybody. And you start playing that game right. because we've seen this now a little bit where the, the loss to the Raiders was bad. They lost to the Chiefs the week prior. Um, then they win four games in a row, but they beat the Saints. They beat Washington twice. They beat the, the hapless Giants. And they play a legit team at home in Arizona. And, and we all know Arizona is still a good football team, even though they've been playing terribly. And I'm still bitter uh, that they lost three games in a row, including a loss to the freaking Lions. 
to where my <laughs> AFC West loss, yeah. future is not going to hit at six to one uh, unless I get really lucky in week 18. Um, I am, I, I'm in agreement with you that, that I think I would rather take these teams as underdogs getting points than as favorites yeah. giving points, if that makes sense. Um, because I think I'd rather yeah. fade both of them as favorites. They're both, they are both hard to trust. Um, and they've had such egregious ups and downs at this point. I guess almost every team has. I have no idea where these playoffs are going. I feel like we're going to talk every game. I'm like, <laughs> I can't wait to watch it. I have no idea how it's going to go. Um, but I yeah, the, the Cardinals showed back up. And, <laughs> and you, the really, to me too, the defense showed back up. I mean, it's a defense that got smoked by the Detroit Lions. Yeah. They go on, they held, hold the, the Dallas Cowboys to just 22 points. It's really impressive. So um, a good win for Arizona. I agree with the whole strength of schedule thing. But also at the same time, not really, because we are having teams like the Lions and like the Texans. We just talked about all of these bad teams upsetting really good teams. The Bucs almost just lost to the Jets. So it's like, yeah, maybe their strength of schedule, if we're talking wins and losses, you know, against the opponents, maybe it's not great. But I think a win is a win at this point. So when you have teams like Miami and you have teams like the Chiefs going on such big winning streaks, like it's going to be impressive regardless of who you're facing. Because again, any given Sunday, they're all NFL teams. I think a win is a win at this point, but it is something to consider because I guess you could say you're technically padding your stats if you are playing really, really poor offenses or really, really bad defenses. But nonetheless, yeah, I don't have much else to say about those two teams. Uh, Rams, Ravens, I guess we can talk a little bit about this game. Disappointing if you were on the Rams spread, I guess you could say, but it kicked off Rams minus six, 87% of the handle was on Rams, the Rams spread. So there you go. Uh, Rams out with a five game win streak after a last minute touchdown from Odell. The Ravens controlled the clock well, I think, but the Rams defense and the Rams red zone defense in particular got the job done. The offense. Matthew Stafford, I know you have some feelings about that, Joe. He finished with three turnovers, two interceptions, and a fumble. Baltimore scored 13 of their 19 points of his turnover off of his turnovers. So even though he did make some big throws down the stretch to get the win, he was the main reasons for the Ravens even being in this game. Uh, Sony Michelle continues to provide a spark to the running game and the passing game, which is good to see. And then Odell, like I mentioned, had... Uh, his fifth touchdown in seven games. He looks good in this offense. His stats weren't crazy for this game, five catches for 39 yards, but he definitely passed the eye test and made some crucial catches when needed. So this Rams team, I don't know, disappointing because they didn't cover for me, but uh, the Ravens too are just a mess and I don't feel like it should have been this close. It is amazing. The Ravens have some miracle covers over the course of the last five weeks during this five game losing streak. You look at the Browns right? game, the Packers game, and then this week against the Rams. They had no business hanging around, especially with a pass defense. It's the worst in football and got absolutely torched for 500-plus yards against the Bengals the week prior. And yet they stood up and had a big game against Matthew Stafford, forcing three turnovers. Matthew Stafford's got more interceptions than touchdowns over the course of the last three weeks, six interceptions to five touchdowns. And he has become a bit of a liability to where, yeah, when he's on, this offense is prolific and hard to stop. But he also spots mm -hmm. opponents' points on such a regular basis. He's got four pick sixes this year. And you look at some of their losses, it's when he's turning the ball over. And, and he, at least at, 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 you know, at least giving the opposing offense a short field. But at worst, just allowing the opposing defense to score points. And you just can't do that, especially in the postseason. And so I think there are some legitimate concerns um, in Los Angeles with this team. Because I think he's had enough games now to where it's not like... Yeah, he just had an off day. Move on. No big deal. Everyone has them. But mm -hmm. they're sort of showing up at a Jared Goff-like pace, which is concerning because you went and got him mm. to where <laughs> that wouldn't be a thing anymore. And those, those turnover-happy games wouldn't be a thing. So I, I do still believe the ceiling is higher with Matthew Stafford. I think I said that pretty confidently. I don't know if anyone would really debate that. But I, I do think the floor is still there to where he can go out and lay an absolute dud in the postseason and make it really hard and ultimately potentially be the reason why this team gets bounced from the postseason. Um, it's, it's amazing. They still won mm -hmm. five in a row. I, like I said, I'm, I'm bitter because I, I had that Arizona NFC West future that I was so sure was going to hit and the, the Cardinals lost three in a row. 
So that's been painful. But it should be really a fun week 18 in the NFC West with the Cardinals having to win to have a chance to win the NFC mm-hmm. West against Seahawks. The Niners have to win to make the playoffs. Um, and then they're playing a the Rams team that if they win, they win the division. So lots at stake in the NFC West um, around a week that potentially doesn't have a whole lot at stake given how sort of the, the wild card situations in both conferences have sort of um, kind of figured themselves out uh, already. Mm-hmm. Yep. It should be fun. I don't know how much fun it's going to be for betting because this, I don't know about you, this week wasn't great for me. I guess the picks I gave out on the show weren't bad, but I had some some props and then some teasers and parlays that just were not fun for me. But that happens, I guess, down the stretch here where you can't really tell what's going to happen with these damn teams. At least you didn't tell yourself on um, Michigan. At least you didn't bet on me. <laughs> No, and I, and I did not expect it to be that sort of game, but I, I'm happy that at least I did get one. They didn't even good show win. up. Thank you, Georgia. And they just got they their didn't. asses kicked. Well, I and I just I have know. to say everything I, I I said did sort of go. I know. According to plan, I know. We'll move on. I know. We'll move on. You tried to we'll tell me. <laughs> let, let, let's talk about something that is fun, and that is win bets Vegas trip for big game weekend. Go do it right now if you have not already. Download the WinBet app. Claim your reward for every build-your-own-bet parlay of $20 or more. You can win. You can lose. You can push. Doesn't matter. Now through January 17th, you'll receive an entry to win multiple prizes every time you build your own bet, including a trip to Shaq's Funhouse in LA and a trip to the Win Las Vegas for a big game weekend in February. Head to winbet.com or download the WinBet app. For official rules and details. Look at that. What up, That's Shaq? Crazy. Like those colors. <laughs> He's like... And me and Joe are going to try and get some tickets, too, because it looks fun. Like some greatest showman <laughs> vibes there. Like little crazy, crazy eyes. But... I don't know. I mean, I would yeah. be down. I'd party if you with... guys, If you guys are listening and can't see, we have a, a nice, fun graphic I'd be down. To, I'd be down to party um, with Shaq. Be cool. I think me and Shaq... I would, on. too. He's... He's... <laughs> You might. You guys are both tall. I don't know. Yeah. I don't have much in Basically common. Basically the same guy. We both play basketball. We're both tall. Same guy. Let's move on to winning picks. Oh, he no. We got, we got Monday Night Football you, and then Joe. winning picks. We do. Monday Night Football, which for me, it goes hand in hand. But um, this should be fun, right? Sending Is off it? Big Ben. Yeah. Do we care? Brown. Brown. Oh, I don't know. I it's, do. another, it's another opportunity I, I, I to bet. That's why we care. It's another opportunity to bet, and I feel bad for Big Ben, so I think it's going to be nice. Why do you Hopefully feel bad for Big well, Ben? We'll see. Why do you feel <laughs> bad for Big Ben? Because every time I watch him, I'm like, because every time I watch him, I'm just like, oh my god, I have zero faith in this guy. And I know that Steelers fans feel the same way, but it's all right. We'll get we'll we'll get to Big Ben and my feelings for him later. Uh, Steelers are laying. Two and a half. So this open Browns minus three. Yesterday got hammered down to a pick them. We wake up now to Steelers minus two and a half. So there's been a lot of movement, I assume likely, because the Browns were officially eliminated from playoffs last night with a Bengals win. So motivation factor is not there. I don't know. Either way, Steelers need a win here and against the Ravens next week. And the Jags need to beat the Colts. They're 15-point dogs right now to get a spot. (laughs) Highly unlikely, but it is possible. Uh, likely Big Ben's final home game at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. He is 25-2-1 and one against the Browns in his career, so the, he's got the trend going for him. Browns have one of the best run offenses right now. They're number two in rushing DVOA. Good matchup with the Steelers, giving up the second most rush yards a game. Steelers currently with a 5% chance of making the playoffs. But Joe, what are their chances of winning this game? I am staying away from either side. I have no idea. These are two <laughs> bad teams. I mean... The Browns and Steelers' first yeah. matchup. It was a, a 15 to 10 final with the Steelers winning that game. And it was one of the harder games to yeah. watch of the season. And at that point, we've seen bad games between bad teams. This was a game between two teams that had playoff aspirations still at that point. And I guess the Steelers are still mathematically in the yeah. mix. I, I anticipate this being another hard game to watch. And I, I don't know if you're going to rally around the win one for the Gipper uh, sort of vibe and, and mentality that the Steelers are going for. Um, I just do. I do want to circle back to why you feel bad for Big Ben. Because do you have? Are you a Big Ben <laughs> fan? Is that your? Is that your guy? I don't know why. I like. I feel for him. I really do. Like when I watch him, I'm like, I don't know. He's just like a sweet old man that should not be playing football right now, but he is. And it's just like he he wanted to give it that one last effort, and we're all just like, no, <laughs> you shouldn't have. But here you are. So 
I feel empathy. Are you taking I a side empathy, here? Joe. Are you do you like do you like a side here? Uh no. No. No, and the funny thing is like I feel bad for him, but I have no faith him in, in him. And I also have no faith in Baker Mayfield. So I'm just gonna go crazy and do a Bill Drone bet parlay. That is crazy. <laughs> You're I'm crazy. Go with two quarterback passing yards over. But I like this because it's at plus 120, and I think that both numbers are low for them. So hear me out here. Both Baker and Big Ben are tied for eighth with nine plays this season of 40-plus passing yards or more. No shade, not a fan of either of them in general, but I think there's good value here. So I'm getting Mayfield, 205-plus passing yards, and Big Ben at 215-plus. For Baker, there's only been four games this season where he didn't hit this over. Statistically, the Steelers' passing defense ranks 18th in yards per game, so around middle of the pack. However, the Steelers are missing a handful of defensive players due to COVID and due to injuries. I think 205 is low for him. I see him reaching around 220. He threw for 225 in the first matchup this year. They're expected to have success in the run game, which should open up some passing opportunities. And then to my guy, Big Ben, 215 plus. Game script, if the Steelers' defense isn't getting the job done, the Steelers' offense will have to catch up, and we've seen that often this season. The Steelers have the fifth worst first half scoring margin. Since week 11, they've trailed every first half by around 16 points, and it's the perfect opportunity for Big Ben to shine with his last game. He has also hit this in the majority of games, all but four, he has hit this over. I love it. I'm also going to go with a build your own bet. Uh, Yeah, I do. I'm going to build my own bet as well. Um, It's going to be a four leg build your own bet. Same game parlay at plus two thirty. And and I went as as safe as you can go for a four leg parlay. But to me, I just need the ball to go in the hoop because your boys on a winning picks losing (laughs) streak. And so here we are. Here we are under fifty three and a half game total. Again, there were twenty five points in the first matchup. Even if they double that. Mm -hmm. They're still not reaching that total. The Browns, plus 10 and a half. In a low-scoring game, I think the Browns are the better team, even though they have nothing, nothing to play for. Covering 10 and a half shouldn't be an issue for Cleveland. Also taking Nick Chubb, 70-plus rushing yards, averaging 95 per game. And Deontay Johnson, over 60 receiving yards. He's averaging 77 per game. Four legs, plus 230. Build your own bet. Put 20 bucks on it. Give yourself a chance uh, to go to Shaq's Fun House Super Bowl weekend. I actually like that too, but we can't say it's a layup because we know that's bad juju. So we'll see what happens. Good luck, no Joe. Such, I appreciate that. There's no. I need the ball go in. Hey, even just a little, little, hey, mid, no, no, little no, mid-range does, jumper. A little mid-range jumper. I got that. It you know? should. But that, that's the issue is it should happen. But as we know, this season, nothing. Carson Wentz so. should have hit T.Y. Hilton up the sideline. I know. <laughs> yeah. Sucks. Yes, it all should have it's happened. It's a new month, it's new uh, year. I know that's episode 31. It is new month, new year, new slate of winning picks because I also uh, did not have a great record, but we don't have to talk about that because <laughs> we have a new slate now. <laughs> all right, everyone. Thanks for listening and watching. Um, enjoy Monday Night Football, and we will see you guys Thursday.